Okay, welcome back to the Florida Boat Guide. Today we are on a 1987 Marine Trader trawler. And working on the tanks today, um, there's three tanks, two of them are leaking, so the owners asked that they all get cleaned out. Um, two saddle tanks, we're gonna need to get holes drilled. Uh, this is the front tank, about 180 gallons there. You can see uh, the woodworking on this thing is just gorgeous. So front berth, little dinette area. Walk around kitchenette, nice living space, and then we'll go up top here uh, once we're finished. Gonna make it happen. And uh, we've got rods, guys, uh, just here a second ago. Just actually cutting holes in the tank since the tanks are getting scrapped they're actually going to cut a hole in the side of this boat in the fiberglass pull those tanks out fiber, fabricate some new ones and then re fiberglass it over so um normally uh i mean rod said he uh quoted this guy about fifty thousand dollars for those new tanks so this boat is barely worth that so it must have some sentimental value but uh, you can see uh these marine traders are beautiful uh it used to be built in taiwan you can see the woodwork on them and Nice little bathroom, shower, been kept up really nice. And the twin Perkins diesel engines are fantastic. All right, gonna finish um, taking out what's left in these saddle tanks. There's the hole we drilled. Okay, um, let's take a look here. We got a uh, West Peaky. Uh, generator looks to been placed uh, at some point along the way pretty good shape and these are the bad boys the Perkins diesels um, And these are the ones you want so a lot of times these old marine traders Are scrapped when they get to this age because the costs are placed in the tanks aren't worth what the hole is worth but uh, again uh, this guy obviously has some memories on this thing and um, Thought it was worth the expense so um, now my, my part's done here, and uh, I'm gonna give it back to Rob, and he can cut these tanks out of there and uh, get to chopping the boat up so they can get to him. Okay, we are way up here. I'm gonna take a quick look on the rest of this boat so you can see how high we are. How high we are. Let's see what we got going on back here. Wow, oh, these beautiful teak decks. Nice little kitchen bar area, and uh, What's cool about this layout is it's a covered back porch. Um, rod holders. And you can close those doors and be protected from the spray. We've got another entrance to the cabin right here. And then a beautiful flybridge. What a beast. Stairs to go up to that deck too. Looks like a spot for the dinghy. Uh, two people definitely live comfortably on board. Um, you know, enough sleeping space for four. Got two full bedrooms, two full bathrooms. So, I can see why the guy wanted to spend the money on it. Welcome aboard, fishy business too. Okay, I'll finish up on this Marine Trader. Um, approximately 260 gallons on board. Uh, today's price is about $1,000 of diesel. That's what it is, unfortunately. Um, but um, that's just kind of how it goes on an old boat. So, like I was mentioning before, we're actually going to cut this boat. Uh, the fiberglass. Just cut a big hole in it and yank those tanks out, then re-fiberglass it all back. So, um, We'll keep an eye on this one. It should be in the yard for uh, probably a month or two. So we'll check back on it here uh, when Rod gets it finished up. All right, I am down here at Innovation Marine in Sarasota again today. And what's cool is I am on the Big Daddy Grady White, same year as mine, 2005. This is a 28 foot sailfish. So um, a little bit fun to see uh, two different 2005s and how uh, they've been cared for over the years and how they can look but um, this is a big boat and I'm kind of excited to take a look and see what the cabin looks like on this uh, massive walk around. 
So you may not be able to hear me very well. I'll try to put the camera over here. Um, the polishing machine is going on right now. A little bit of water in the tank. So uh, doing a 10 micron fuel polish with a water block filtration on this boat. It's a single tank, but twin 225 Yamaha outboards. So um, quite a massive cockpit area. Then what's cool on these Grady Whites, you sit up real high. And this one's got the full enclosure, um, like mine, hard top, just everything's bigger. So let's take a look down below real quick. So all the hardware, very similar to what I have. Um, but we've got an actual cabin on this boat. Huh? That selfie stick figured out, okay. All right. Bed, rod holder. TV space, just very interesting, um, the similarities, obviously, same manufacturer, same year, but um, this is kind of cool, got a little refrigerator, kitchen area, microwave, um, bathroom, uh, pull out shower head, so if you want to take a hot shower, looks like you can, it has air conditioning, and um, I'm assuming this is, yeah, this is another sleeping area that he's using for storage. Um, yeah, because there's air conditioning vents back there. So you got another bed space back here. Um, this converts to a bed here, plus there's a tabletop. So um, kind of cool um, for a walk around fish setup. Um, wouldn't want to trailer this bad boy back and forth. Definitely an in the water kind of boat. Um, but take you anywhere you want to go. So about finished up with this one in Sarasota, then going to head back home. And uh, that should be it for the day. So welcome back to the Florida Boat Guy. And I know this is a boating channel, but I've had a few people ask me about the truck. Um, I'm in a 2022 Ram 2500, the heavy duty series, because I'm constantly pulling trailers. And I recently, this past summer, traded in my 6.7 Cummins for this 6.4 liter gas Hemi engine. And I get a lot of questions. Why would you get rid of your diesel for the gas engine? And I want to take a few minutes today just kind of going over everything. And obviously the big thing is the price of diesel. Here in Florida, we hit highs uh, around $6.30 for diesel. Um, I was also paying, with all the miles that I drive, about $50 a month in the uh, DEF, uh, the diesel exhaust fluid which uh, became expensive after a while. And so first question people ask is, how is the fuel economy on the 6.4 liter gas? Answer is not great. Um, but when you're buying a heavy duty truck, you kind of know that. Um, it's going to drink some fuel. But um, in comparison to the diesel, um, I, I'm getting about 10 miles to the gallon, pulling my trailer day in, day out. And that's a lot of um, stop and go city driving um, 10 miles per gallon isn't great but for comparison i was getting 11 maybe 11 and a half on the diesel so when you start to compare um i'm looking here uh, the price of diesel is a solid dollar 50 higher um, a mile and a half uh per gallon So one of the nice things about the 6.4 Hemi is instant acceleration. It will throw you back in your seat. And so with the Cummins, but obviously with a big diesel engine like that, you've got a little bit of turbo lag. And one thing I really like, I'm doing a lot of stop and go traffic, driving around town. There are a lot of snowbirds down here this time of year. Our traffic gets pretty bad in the winter. And the 6.4 naturally aspirated engine you give it a little bit of gas and it goes. There's no hesitation whatsoever. And um, especially without the trailer behind you, I really enjoy driving this truck. Um, and I have been so happy. And you can see this thing, I mean, might as well be a sports car. Yes. Okay, so a quick walk around of the Bighorn 2500 truck. 
Um, so like I mentioned before, this truck is about $2,500 cheaper than my Tradesman 6.7 Cummins uh, diesel. And, um, but I get a nicer truck. And part of that uh, Bighorn package, I've got the nicer wheels, 20 inch uh, blacked out wheels. Um, also with this particular package, instead of all chrome up front, you get a black grill here, painted bumper, um, you know, depending on your preferences but uh you know i, I think it's kind of sporty looking i like i like the look of it um and what are we towing today we've got our cargo craft trailers this is my seven foot by 14 foot uh weighs between five and eight thousand pounds depending on what i've got in it uh, including the generator on the front this is my 18 foot it's an eight and a half foot wide cargo craft trailer when the generator is on the front uh, we have as much as about 1200 pounds of ton weight which is uh, a decent amount um, but this this trailer uh, I've had between 10 and 12 thousand pounds, which is a little much for this gas uh, truck uh, Obviously, obviously it's within range of its towing capabilities, but it's it's not happy when this is loaded down But this smaller one uh, this truck is a great combination All right, we're on the last part of our 6.4 Hemi truck review and going up the Skyway Bridge here, uh, about half a mile ahead of me, uh, lots of traffic, but uh, about six to 7,000 pounds behind us in the trailer. And just wanted to show you what it looks like going over um, uh, a grade like this. All right, so we're crossing Tampa Bay now. You can see what's left of the old bridge there that collapsed, oh, back in the 80s. And um, so there's the bay, we can see Egmont Key Light distance there and we are just climbing the bridge now I'm um, holding nice at um, 70 miles an hour and you can see there's the first downshift I'm um, just gonna try and hold 70 going up this hill if traffic will allow and um, no real problems Okay, we are over the bridge and cruise control is on 75. We are just kind of hanging out on the interstate, uh, interstate 75 here on the way down to Sarasota and Siesta Key. But uh, last shot here, um, I'll show you. Um, transmission's real happy there. Uh, about 2200 RPM, 75 miles per hour, and that steady 10 miles to the gallon with this trailer. But what is nice, I mean, I'm in eighth gear and it's holding um, just fine at this speed. So, um, last little review here of the 6.4 liter Hemi. Um, you know, gotta be happy with that, being able to be on the highway at this speed and um, really hold, holding the gears uh, without having to downshift uh, too much unless you're going over a bridge or something. It's uh, pretty happy, even with a strong crosswind that we've got today. So anyway, that's about all I've got uh, on the truck review for today and gonna get back to boats. <laughs>